Hello, everyone. My name is Hank Sutala with Holistic Health and Healing, and I have a very special uh, person on with the live stream with us today, uh, my friend Angie, who I met originally through Fellowships of the Spirit. We served on the board of directors together and found that we have very similar passions and interests, and we've become friends. And um, now with the current situation, it's giving us an opportunity to uh, find how we can continue creating amongst the impossible, which is kind of the theme of creating possibility in impossible times and also what to do to stay centered when there's all, all these types of things. But Angie, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself a little bit and tell us a little bit about you. Okay. Um, hi, Hank. It's, it th thanks. Thanks for having me on. So, um, um, yeah, my name is Angie and I um, uh, own a holistic center um, in Williamsville, New York. Um, so I know, I know, I ho hopefully some of my, my friends are on here. Um, I'm also um, a medium, and I've been a medium since I was um, I, I, about 17 years old is, is when I started my journey. And my journey took me to Fellowships of the Spirit, um, which is a fantastic place, right, Hank? We, 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 yep. we, oh, yeah. absolutely. Uh, that was one of the places that changed my changed my life a bit because I, I was always gifted as a child and I didn't have anything to put everything into context. And so after I got uh, sober, then I found fellowships and got some tools so I wouldn't go back to drinking. <laughs> oh, that was a good thing. That was a good reason to go. That was a good reason. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Well, yeah, definitely. Well, it is. It changed my life too. And I kind of, you know, I started playing around with, with uh, like readings and being able to pick up messages. I really didn't know what I was doing, you know, and I loved doing it, um, but I, it kind of scared me. And I wound up with, um, with Elaine Thomas getting a reading and, and that's with my friend Sandy. And that's how I found out about fellowships and wound up there. Um, and then it, through the, as the years went by, I graduated from the school in 2002. Um, I went back and mentored it a whole bunch of times and, and, um, and then that was on the board of directors. And, and right, that's where I met Hank. And, um, and now I have my center, I do readings. Um, I actually, this is some really exciting news, um, Hank, and you probably know this, but I just got registered in Lilydale to do readings. Yeah, I did hear about that. And for people who don't know, in order to be a registered medium in Lilydale, you have to commit a couple years of your life now because it's a two-year process. Mm -hmm. You have to go to a lot of development circles, you have to serve at the stump, and you have to go through a rigorous um, screening process. It is not fun. Yeah. They don't make it easy. No, it wasn't fun. <laughs> It really was. I, ha I, ha I have to say, but it was worth it, though. You know, you learn a lot, so so it was worth it. I'm always willing. I like to put myself out there and learn as much as I can, and 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 I know you're the same. Yep, absolutely. And and that's uh, what we really want to talk about tonight is one with a unprecedented times talking about what keeps people centered, and also uh, to look at everything that comes to at you in life as what could I be in creationship with this to create possibility and ease for my life. Notice I didn't say relationship. So, cause when you start to relate to things, you're bringing yourself into separation from oneness and that type of thing. So if you look at everything as a creation ship instead of a relationship, uh, then you can look at what's gonna be able to create possibility and ease. And that's why when everything happened, like, uh, you know, my center in uh, North Olmsted, we rely on rentals and everything basically got put on hold. It's like, well, what are we going to do? And I'm like, I'm reaching out to my friend, Angie. I'm like, what can we co-create together? And yeah. what possibilities could we create in this space? Right. And here and we are. Only, yep, go ahead. And here we are. And, yeah, and here we are. I was just because I didn't mean to interrupt you. Sorry. Oh, you're but, fine. But, 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 but also, too, I, I think that, that we realize that, you know, how, how do we keep everything going, but also, you know, meditation and the classes and things that we do are, are things that people are, I, I, we need that. I need that. You know, I'm, I'm meditating. I'm a meditator. I meditate all the time, but I'm meditating more just to keep myself centered and keep myself in a space of, I don't want to be in fear. And when, when all the, all this happened, um, and I, and I'm sure a lot, a lot of you felt the same way. It was so fast and it was so shocking and, and you, and I was glued to the television and kind of watching everything that was going on. And then I realized, you know, I'm going to a place of fear and that's, what did you call that Hank? Creator creationship. What did you say? Creationship. It's a, a thing right. from Access Consciousness. There's a book called Relationships. Are you sure you want one? And they talk in that book about being in creationship with things instead of relationships, relationship oh, to it. things, right? Because oh, you, you it. never, it's never about sacrificing who you are to fit into the box of limitation of a relationship. It's about empowering each other to be their total being and supporting that. And that's what a creationship is. It's all of us supporting each other in possibility and, um, and what we can do not just for ourselves, but for the betterment of everyone. I love it. 
I love yeah. that. I, love, I have to remember that word. I'm going to start using that too. Creation ship. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and yeah. as you mentioned fear, there's one great acronym uh, that I love. It's uh it's one I just discovered too. It's feeling excited and ready. So when everything changes and it's like you have this anxiety, like, are you really anxious or are you excited for a change? Cause this might just be the awakening on the planet that we've been waiting for. Cause I think, was it Mark Thomas? Uh, I forget who said uh, when you have to sit in meditation, it's just you yourself and your soul. Right. Yeah. And, and everybody yeah. having to be at home and yeah. being broken out of their normal day-to-day -day activities, there's a, this pause button that allows everybody to sit down and really check in and get connected yeah. with themselves again. And understand how we are, we're connected to everybody else too, right? Because yeah. everybody in the world is feeling this. There isn't one person, you know, we could call somebody in any other country and they would understand what we're feeling, you know? And, 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 and I think Tom Kratzley said that's really the first time in, in history that that's ever happened, something that we can all connect to the same way. It's happening to everybody. Right. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Lilydale, I've noticed that we're both using, we're referencing people from Lilydale left and right. So Tom Kratzley is one of the um, professors or teachers at Fellowships mm -hmm. of the Spirit, who's um, the main healing uh, uh, teacher, if you will. Elaine mm -hmm. Thomas is the foundational pastor of Fellowships of the Spirit. And then I referenced uh, Mark Thomas, who is uh, her husband, who uh, just right. recently has been a little bit more active since I think he retired, right? So he's been uh, he retired, active yeah. with teaching. Uh, one of my favorite classes, you got to go to at least year one of the school to take it, but uh, they have this wonderful 100th Monkey program that is just wow. like this amazing class that he teaches. So uh, absolutely, yeah. awesome. Which is all on, which is, which a lot of, a lot of is based on, on meditation, you know, and, and, and if we, and if we meditate and we sit in a space of meditation, even if everyone say in our family or in our lives, isn't meditating, it doesn't matter. We're going to change our energy and shift our energy. And that's going to, and that's going to, it's going to affect everybody else, you know? So I, I feel like meditation is, is probably one of the most important things we can be doing right now. Yeah. Yeah, and if you're not good at meditating, then uh, you can use different tricks. Like uh, tomorrow night, we're doing a virtual sound yeah. bath. Uh, so uh, Angie's kind of vir my virtual host. And, uh, so you can s sign up and I'll be live streaming it. And I'll have crystal bowls and tuning forks and different things. But different sound frequencies help your brain to go into a theta state. And even the, the sound of the bowls, it creates a response in your cells that uh, helps you relax. It's called uh, puffing. It's a re release of nitric oxide. And just so there's physiological things going on that then creates the space for you to more easily slip into a meditative space. And if you have never gone to a sound bath ceremony uh, run by Hank, you really, really need to be there tomorrow <laughs> because he's awesome. You're awesome at it. It's so good. And and I remember like um, Hank came to Santosha and had a kind in you call it a concert. He had a concert, and um and it was it really is like it takes you into a different space and you feel so relaxed and really it, it brings you back to balance and you feel healed as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I do a little bit of a combination. I focus, um, I call my, I, I kind of shifted from calling them concerts to calling it ceremony and sound now, because it's really a combination. I take the Peruvian uh, traditions uh, and I open up in ceremony and I'm, it's always a little bit different based on the energy of the day and then kind of reinforce the energies that come in with the sound. So it's like twofold. Mm -hmm. It's like a ceremonial thing. And then you also have the sound healing to kind of anchor you. And then mm -hmm. we're going to be doing some things, uh, hosting Angie virtually. She's going to be doing a virtual gallery reading for us. I believe April uh -huh. 4th, I have the date. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. a week after a group past life regression. And then yeah. A, about a week after that, uh, develop your intuition class, like how to use intuition in your day-to-day -day life. And I, I remember one of the quotes that I gave Elaine for the pro, uh, fellowships program was like learning how to use intuition. It was like before that, uh, it was like going through life without MapQuest, right? Well, MapQuest was what we were using back then. Now you use Google Maps or whatnot. But imagine not having your navigational system and having to navigate life with no nothing like that. That's what your intuition really is. It's your Geiger counter of, of, of possibility and consciousness and, and choosing things that are going to create more ease in your life versus uh, more uh, trepidation and, and yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It, it, it's, it's that guidance, you know, that guidance that we all have inside of us. And, and, and we all, we all have a connection to our intuition. And, and, and a lot of times it's, 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 you look back and say, Oh, I knew I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> or I, I knew, right. Hank, you know, I've done, have you ever had oh, yep. that happen? 
Yeah, yeah I stopped myself now, though, because I had the realization that we love to judge ourselves based on past choices, based on current data. And if you had that current data when you made the choice, you probably would have chose differently. But we start to fragment ourselves when we start playing those games. It's but meditation's true. helped you stay out of that and not uh, give yourself a hard time. Oh yeah, Med and meditation can help you too. Like, like, it, and 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 the, I want to talk more about the the sound um, uh, um, ceremony tomorrow too. Um, but but yeah, meditation and connecting to your intuition because you can connect to your intuition, and and that's and that's where your faith is too. And 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 not, and right now we need to be connected to our faith, not our fear. You know, and that and that's what's gonna to me. That's kind of what this is all about. I feel like it, it's like it. Um, it put the world on pause, and 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 we've heard that, but it was like a stop button, and and and, and you know we're we're forced to to stay in our houses. I'm not used to that at all. You know, I'm I'm always always running around, but it's good for me and it's good for everybody to connect back to our souls. Absolutely. So. Yeah. One good thing, too, if you start your practice of meditation, whatever you want to do, pick something that you do right beforehand that will be your your signal that you're about to start meditating. For mm -hmm. myself, I do three deep breaths. Some people like ringing a little chime or a bell. Some people use uh, the signal of taking your tongue and putting it on the upper palate because that's like a meridian point that helps with relaxation. Whatever it is, you set that. And then once you develop your practice, if you're in a spot that catches you off guard, all you have to do is hit that anchor point, even if you're not ready to meditate, you hit that anchor point and it instantly brings you back to that site, that space of being centered. Kank's totally correct. You know, I'm just thinking we should probably have a meditation uh, class or something, Hank. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, since yeah. we're talking about it, definitely. Yeah, uh, I think so. yeah, I didn't think of that before, but we probably should do that because a lot of people say that they can't meditate. They don't know how to. And and and, and come tomorrow, definitely, you know, we're, we're going to be on Zoom tomorrow um, um, with Hank doing the sound bowls, and that that helps you. I mean, really just kind of listening to those puts me in an instant. It, it's a, it's meditation really is a place of relaxation and that's going to bring you to that. And I think right now I need relaxation. I was pretty <laughs> happy. You know, I got to get out of the stress. I was happy when, when you, uh, off, you know, asked if we could do this, you know, and I, I, I don't even think I hesitated. I immediately said, yes, yep, yes. It was yes. Well, we always wanted to work more together, but you're in Buffalo and I'm in Cleveland. And it's like, well, now virtually it gives us even more of a reason to, to get the technology working so we can do things like this. I know. And it's know. so much fun. <laughs> it's so much fun. I know. I love it. I'm having a good time and we're learning, learning from each other too. And you're right. We always wanted to do it and we couldn't. So here we are. Thank goodness oh. for technology. Absolutely. Uh, so anything, because I know we were kind of keeping it short a little bit today, um, but what was there any other final things that you wanted to mention or, or talk about uh, tools that people might be able to use to keep centered uh, in the upcoming days before until tomorrow when they can make it to the concert, of course. Yes, you gotta come to the concert. I'm telling you, you have to be, come to the concert. You'll love it. And and it sounds great, too. We realize that, too. You know, we're doing it, you know, virtual this way so you're not here in person. And, and it's just as good either, either way, right, Hank? Uh, there are certain things like you'll there's certain things that are better in person because you have different sound interactions, but uh, for the most part you get like the spirits there, the energy is there, and you get a, a lot of the same experience. There's just a few things that I have yeah. to go with too much science to describe what would be different, but you're going to get the nitric oxide release. There's just a couple of harmonic things that aren't present when you don't have the different interactions of the sound frequencies bouncing off of each other. But right. if you have stereos, you know, like the different speakers, put them around the room and the more of that effect you can have with the sound coming at you from different ways, you would minimize what you're uh, missing out on them. I'm glad you said that. I'm going to do that. We'll talk about that earlier and tell everybody. So, so last thing, like to me, um, to keep yourself out of stress right now, um, um, do some deep breathing, you know, and don't just chest breathe because so much of the time we chest breathe and it's so important like to relax yourself is to breathe all the way into your belly and push it out too. you know, you know, it doesn't make any difference. And, and, and if you, wa if you watch a baby breathe, that's how babies breathe. Proper breathing is breathing all the way into your belly. And that's where the comic, the calmness comes from. So if you did that, like every morning or, you know, you start watching something on television and, and you can't help it and, and, and you know it's another news show and it's making you feel anxious just do that breathe all the way into your belly you can even hold it for four counts and then exhale and push everything out and if you do that for five minutes 
that takes you into the same place of, of um, meditation. And for me, that calms me. And I, I get to like breath four or five and I'm calm. So try that because that, that will really help you. And it'll connect you, you know, to that inner self and to where your answers are and to where your faith is. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And, and the one thing that I would tell people is to start asking a question, except for the question, why? Why is always the victim question. So that's the one to avoid. But ask the question, like this is from Access Consciousness, how does it get any better than this? And when you right. ask a question like that, even topographical brain mapping shows that when you pose a question to the brain, it engages it in a totally different way. And it's like looking to to create that answer for you. And the answer is in the way that the universe delivers experience to you. So if you say, how does it get any better than this? The universe shows you. So whether you just stubbed your toe or won the lottery, you ask the same question, how does it get any better than this? Then do some deep breathing because maybe you'll get some guidance and intuition of how, well, you know, what you could do to help the universe along with creating that for you. Uh, but the question is so important. So you can get out of your stinking thinking, ask a question that will enter into possibility instead of the ego's rationalization of, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? <laughs> I love it, I love that. And I agree with you, because why, it kind of, kind of makes us feel like victims. And, 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 and the question you're saying makes us feel empowered. Absolutely. And that's How does it get any better than this? And then the universe says, I've been waiting for you to ask me. Uh, here's like, I have a million different ways. Let's start here. <laughs> yeah, and you just yeah. keep asking that question. Yeah, but as soon as you say, oh, man, this is as good as it gets, you just stopped possibility. So it's always, how does it get any better than this? How does it get any better wow. than this? I love you, that. Hank. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, mm -hmm. cool. Well, thank you, everybody, for coming on. Thank you, Angie. This was so much fun. We'll probably just have to plan some lives just to, because they're I think fun. So. <laughs> I know. I think so, too. Just have some good discussions, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you, everybody, for coming on. Thank you, Angie. And we will see you hopefully tomorrow for the concert. Okay, sounds good, Hank. I'll see you tomorrow. Take see care. everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.